so what is Western civilization? How would you define it? It's you know it's not geographical. It's not it's not in the West. No, though it originally was, of course. Yeah, I mean, I think I would say it it has to be the sum total of um, of our aspirations, values, conventions, traditions, institutions, the sort that create us as societies and enable us to live together fairly harmoniously, provide us with a kind of common language of, of, of social existence. So as you, as you said, it's no, it's no longer geographical. Um, parts of it have become accepted pretty well universally, at least as aspirations. Um, but nevertheless, it still has historical links with, I suppose, with the Christian world, with, with Christendom, with, with originally with Europe, and indeed with pre-Christian Europe. Ancient, ancient Greece, for example, ancient the Greece, idea of yes. Ancient Greece, the idea of democracy. Ancient Greece for many of our ethical ideas. Ancient Rome for part, a large part of our legal system. And of course, parts of medieval Europe, Christian medieval Europe for many of our political institutions, or at least the origins of them. So I think, I think that's part of it. But then you might say, well, but then what about the, the, the 18th century, the Enlightenment, the Age of Reason? That too. I mean, I, th- I think Western civilization is, is a whole lot of, it's an amalgam of a, of a lot of different things, which is what probably makes it able to survive and adapt. It's not a civilization that, that regards its origins in a single source, a single religion, a single prophet, a single body of, of texts, but a very diverse and I think one could say inclusive um, selection of influences from quite a number of different periods of history and of, of different nations and cultures. Uh, yes, one of the, the criticisms um, I mentioned to you yesterday was a, um, a certain academic here criticised Western civilization not only for being past its use by date but for not being diverse enough. Um, and as you say, it is the most d- diverse of all civilizations, it's absorbed and adopted and taken taken from other civilizations and perfected. Yes, um, um, and of course, it's constantly changing. So I, f- I, th- I find it very difficult to see it as being passed its sell by date because it's not a fixed it's not a fixed body of ideas. It's a constantly changing set of of principles and practices. Um, it's not the same now as it was a hundred years ago, or three hundred years ago, or perhaps even fifty years ago. Um, and so it's, it's very difficult to, in fact, I don't think one can define it as a certain fixed set of, of, of ideas or laws. Um, but nevertheless, there may be certain things that most of us would feel that we would like to include in our idea of Western civilization. And these would be things like, well, you mentioned democracy, um, um, the rule of law, um, tolerance, um, equality before the law, uh, things of that kind. And also, of course, a, a whole set of, of, pure, of cultural practices. Western civilization is not only about political structures, but it's also a, a, a very varied tradition of artistic culture, literary culture, musical culture, which many of us, in a sense, can, can possess going back over, over many hundreds of years. Um, the fact that we admire paintings from the Italian Renaissance, um, that we can admire um, prehistoric cave paintings, that we can enjoy the music of Bach or, um, or indeed of modern, of 20th century <laughs> of jazz. Or, you know, yeah. th- it's hard to think of a more um, of, a, of any of the world's civilizations that has a greater diversity of influence and one that is constantly modifying itself. And that, I think, is the source of its strength. What are the dangers of looking at, at just the dark pages of, of history when, when we're looking at something like at, at Western civilization? Well, I think we risk undermining our own values by focusing only on the negatives. Um, all histories, of course, contain tragedies and, and crimes, as well as episodes of, well, heroic and, um, and positive episodes. And if you, f- it's, a, it's, a, it's a dis- as much a distortion to focus only on the negatives as it will be to focus only on the positives. 
I think we have to accept that our history contains both. Um, but to focus only on the negatives, it seems to me, risks um, undermining any sense that there, is, there are things of value that need to be protected and asserted. And those are things that belong to our, a certain tradition of politics. So, for example, things that we share, parliamentary government, the rule of law, um, the right to a fair trial, equality before the law. All these things we would almost certainly feel ought to be preserved. But if you regard them as part of a civilization which is worthless, then what is the justification for, for maintaining them? I think one has to accept that they are part of a, of a whole civilization. If you regard the concept of Western civilization as being synonymous with a whole structure of power, then if you feel that you want to be in opposition to that structure of power, then you might say you're in opposition to the civilization that is part of it. Uh, I mean, I expect it, um, it, it certainly has its roots in, I would have thought in, in 19th century political ideologies, Marxism it's is Marxism. the most obvious, but also in uh, anti-colonialist movements. If, um, if, if imperial structures are seen as somehow part of or, or structuring Western civilization, Western civilization as being imposed on other civilizations by, by force, um, and of course that uh, is, is, is part of the story, but not the whole part of the story. I remember when I was writing this book, I, I did find it very difficult to write about imperialism and the memory of imperialism. And I wrote a draft and, and showed it to a, a colleague who's a, an Africanist. And he said, why are you so negative? And I said, I didn't know I was. He said, well, you have to realize that in many countries, um, British parliamentary practice even if they don't themselves have it, or indeed especially if they don't themselves have it, is regarded as an aspiration um, to, which, to which they want to keep. So I think that, you know, if, if, if we start saying um, everything from the West is bad, then that includes concepts of human rights, it includes democratic practices and institutions. And I think it's quite dangerous to, in a sense, to provide an argument for, for governments and rulers in certain countries who, who claim a kind of legitimacy by saying that they're anti-Western. Um, you know, as it were to say, um, you, know, you people say that um, we should be tolerant, that we should be democratic, but that those are your values, they're not our values. We have a quite different civilizational tradition which doesn't regard the equality of women as important, which doesn't regard um, individuals as having legal rights, which, which has a quite different set of principles and therefore we just simply don't accept yours. And if we, if we go along with that, then in some ways we're failing in a kind of duty, the duty of the powerful towards the weak, towards the, the peoples of those countries who are often suffering under tyrannical regimes. Um, for whom certain excuses are sometimes made on the grounds that they, are, they have a, a, a separate and legitimate civilization. Mm -hmm.